All right, well today we're doing um, training at Penrith Solar. We've got three different things happening at once. Um, let's go have a look and see what the boys are doing. Yeah, so we've got Dan and Tyson here working on this board at the moment. Dan's currently working out the difference between the backup side of your house and your non-backup side, and then he's wiring in the breakers. So we've got different circuits going out throughout this house here. Um, and we're gonna back up our lights, our power, and then we're gonna leave our oven and hot plates off your backup. And then Tyson's over here doing our um, neutral bars and our earth. Um, so as a same as a similar as a home, you'd have your earth stake and then you've got your, your cables kind of running into that at the moment. So this is our battery cable. Um, we're going to run that um, in through this wall to go here. Coop, do you want to tell us what your plan is of how we're going to actually get the cable through this wall? Yeah, definitely. So. After coming out of our controller and out of the breaker just in here, our plan was to mount the battery onto this wall. So what we'll end up doing is drilling through this stud here. That way we can run the data and the power cable for the battery through. And the good part about the M-Phase battery is you can do right hand or left hand entry. So because there is a timber in the middle here, we can choose to utilize this section of the cavity. So once we drill that hole, we'll tongue it through and then pull the cables through mount the battery and then terminate it. Right, what are we up to here? Talk about the, the beautiful cable running down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's explain where Max ran the cable. So we need a four hour charger here. We need to go back to our main switchboard. Yes, yes. So how we do that is they've gone up and over. Um, they've pinned the cable up, up here with your uh, saddles. Coming down, they've drilled a couple of holes to get through these beams. And then they've come out here nice and neat. Um, you can see that this car charger needs to be fit pretty like secure. So we've got some beams here that we've screwed into. Um, you're using that car charger every day, so you don't want that to fall off the wall. And if we go around and see what Max is doing over here, so he's at the end of um, he's at the end of terminating this. So we've got all our wires here ready for the actual car charger to go on. Do you want to explain what you're up to there, Max? Yes, yeah, so I'm just terminating my um, last couple of turns here, neutral and earth. Um, that'll be a quick fix and then we'll be getting this front face on here, um, doing a bit of uh, plug and play. And yeah, we mounted the timbers on the back so we have a place to mount our two button head screws here um, to mount this enclosure on. And then, yeah, we've run all our cable to spec. We'll be siliconing around the um, back entry here. So, and so now I'm just doing these last couple of turns and we should be finished shortly. The important thing with the car charger is when you wrap the cable around, you have space on a ball all kind of parts of it. What you can do if you do it too low or too high, you won't be able to get your actual cable tucked around nice and neat. And the last thing you want to do is look at an ugly cable. So we've got it a good height, good charging height, um, which is just here and we'll put this Gen 1 on once he's done. Yeah. Uh, and then like it's obviously a lot easier than cutting the cable and the putting cable it in. and using oh, okay. to prevent those sharp edges. Yeah, sweet. Um, Essentially, yeah. there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can, normally what we do is there's leftover bits of orange circular insulation. We'll strip that and then use that to protect this cable from being cut from that. Being thin metal, rubs on it a fair bit when the door opens and shuts. It can cut through insulation and create an IR fault. This is just a bit of mechanical protection for it. Sure. Switch one, so these are all our test switches here. Um, when we turn switch one on, we have an open circuit neutral. Yeah, so. So how'd you find that? How so basically, first thing I did was I tested from earth to active and earth to neutral. Show us that. Show us how you did that. Yeah. Turn on all these and then... Turn them on or turn them off? Turn them off, sorry. Like, it, turn them off, sorry. Yeah. Test from earth to all my actives and my neutrals as well. Yep. Um, yeah, test that as well. So we've taken out the, the this, this earth link as well, the MEN. Yep. So and we've taken it out so it's not connected to the neutral at all. That's right. Yep. Um, so there's no, there's the, if you connect this together, you're going to get a bad reading on all your neutrals. You're going to get, you're going to hear, you're going to hear a beep on yep. all your neutrals and stuff. So that's a good thing to take take that out. So you isolate just the um, the earth and the so all the earth cables are just earth and then all the neutrals are connected to each other. All the actives are just, you know. They're not connected at all. Yep. There's no connection between any of these circuits at all. So the next thing I'll do is um, get my earth. So where's my clip? Get my alligator clip, put it on there. 
and I'll put on this thing here and I'll start testing all my earths so test that there make sure they're all connected to make sure to make sure there's earth continuity and what's the problem hole. if they weren't connected if you weren't getting a reading there so every time that makes that noise you get a reading it's just an easier way for us to kind of tell that it's it's working yep um, when we're testing but what happens if you did it like what, what would be the the downside of that so, so that would we mean this PowerPoint here and we didn't get an earth why is that an issue so that would mean there'd be an open circuit um, earth somewhere along the line so there'd be a cable an earth cable running to here yep it's been chopped off or something like that or like that's a rat's tune through it rat's tune like through that. it or just not connected at all yep and that's our safety wire the earth yeah that's right so our earth actually um, when you have a, a fault to earth your circuit breaker will trip so what the earth does is it ensures that when you have a short circuit or a um, when you have a fault to earth your breaker will always trip Yep, perfect. Right. perfect. So let's find that. So, so you're saying number one, there is a problem somewhere. So let's keep testing and see if we can find that fault. Yep. Yep. Test yep, that. So We're good there. Now I'm going to go through all the light patterns. Yep, so you connect onto your neutral. Yep. Yep. Go for so it. just test that. So now I'm going to go along, test all my neutrals. Oh, what's that? I oh, get turn on all these circuit breakers. Sorry. Three breakers have to be on so you can actually see your neutrals. That's yep. right. Yep. Now I'm going to go through all my lights. As I'm testing my lights, I'm going to flick that off to see if I'm switching the neutral. Because neutrals aren't supposed to be switched. What's that? So that there, we don't have a beep. So we have no neutral there? No neutral there. So if we turn this test switch back on, or back off, we should feel, we should get that beep. Yep. Yeah, so leave that on and we can show that for this thing here, we've purposely put this in to cut that neutral. So now that you've, you've successfully found a, a, a broken neutral somewhere. Yep, we found a fault. So that's an open circuit neutral. So if we were to, we could, if we wanted to look at what circuit that is here, we could guess that it, that's on the light. So if that's yep. a light circuit, then what breaker would we test first? I and mean, we could test them all, but to find that exact cable, Looking at this, how would you determine which one that light there is on? So I'll just test from this, um, the active here. Yep. And then I'll put my test on one of these. Yeah, let's try that. So you're, right, so you're gonna go put that, put that active on there? Yep. Yep, so that's that circuit there. Are you sure? Wait. We'd have to turn off all these switches first, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So because this buzz bar here is connecting yeah. all the actives together. Yeah when you do that. So now let's test it. Yep. All right. So then we could trace that back to see that the neutral was there and then we'd know that this neutral here is faulty between here and to our light. Sweet. Cool. That's our fault, fault number one. Got five more faults to go. <laughs>